few sources. So I just wanted to just really open to two questions um, and keep it really open. I, I was thinking about as you're talking about the people in the room, the, uh, so a lot of the people in the room, the profile would be they've essentially speculated their money, typically paid something out of a mortgage, they've got some, some, some friends and family to sort of put some money behind them. Um, I've generally had the view that um, uh, venture capitalists, when they get involved, they typically only want to invest to facilitate your growth. They're generally looking for, in, for firms that have kind of proven the concept and really what they want to do is be the shot in the arm to say, okay, you've proven it can work here, but we, you don't have the marketing muscle and the funding. We want our money to really be supercharge your marketing. Not that they won't pay for R&D, but they're generally a lot more reserved about saying, well, this idea, we don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's throw a lot of money in just to see if the idea is doable. Is that a, that's, that's been my perception. Do you think that's fair or do you think it's unfair? Look, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, when you do speak to some of the venture capital firms, they are looking for, one, on, on one hand, a, a bang for their buck. So they are looking for some sort of um, cutting edge technology which is a disruptor with good management and good board that is potentially underfunded that they can actually add value. Yep. Right, so adding value is very, very important to them, but they also need to understand that, that they're going to take a business and it's going to take their investment at least three, five, seven years with that return on investment. So when we introduce Fronty Ventures, which are that venture capital, they've got offices in Singapore um, and, 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 and Russia. I mean, they looked at Expert 360, but they still did two or three months worth of work. Right? But really where they saw a really big gap in the market and bang of the buck, they like management, they like the board, and they want to take that and distribute that content or effectively that platform into Europe. Yep. So there's always something that they, and I'm, I'm speaking pretty generally, sure. not only are they looking obviously to get a return on investment, that's otherwise you're in, that's what you're investing for, but they believe they can add whether it is some sort of an expertise on the board yep. or can help with the composition of their relationships or introductions into different call or different platforms and open doors. So there's different reasons for the venture capital guys to get on board. When Peak and Rampersand and Fronty Ventures worked on the term sheet, and the term sheet is really a two page or a three page which states the terms of the deal when you, you, before an investment, right? When we looked at Expert 360, there was a lot of back and forth for the last month. And if they don't hit specific um, uh, gross profit targets or EBITDA targets or revenue targets, you, right, as an investor, as in the venture capital guys, because I came in the same sort of term sheet, you get more shares or a lower share price or a different conversion. I'm not saying they're going out, James, and saying, yes, I'll invest and I'll take money out of the table. That's not what I was saying. I was just saying there's different call it uh, restrictions and hurdles that you have to meet. And if you don't meet those hurdles, trust me, they, there's ways to protect themselves, right? Um, and so they can dilute your shares? They'll dilute your shares, yep. um, different conversions, I mean, different restrictions. Um, they will ensure that they are ranked above any of the other shareholders or any other, does that make sense? So if there is an exit down the track, they will ensure that if the business does go bankrupt or illiquid, they will get their money out. They will get their money out, yep. right? So that is great if you can come under the venture capital, but we don't necessarily like that venture capitals have come before because of those reasons. So, so, so we had an interesting experience. We were approached, we have the samurai business and we were approached by a US firm for a buyer. And the, uh, we, we didn't get to a point of sale because we just couldn't agree on a price. And at the end of it, I got speaking with a guy who has probably a similar job to yourself. Uh, and he made some comments to me. He said, Ben, I think at the time the samurai business was doing about a $2 million turnover. Uh, and he said to me, no, he said, kind of when we'd done all this work and we really, it was very clear the deal wasn't gonna go ahead, that basically, they were what was called bottom feeders. They were looking for people in the sub $5 million turnover range and looking to buy them at about one to two times their, their profit. And so, and the reason they wanted to do that was because they would then pump them up and they had the, their impression in the market was that if they got them to sort of between five and $10 million, that that's at the point when others would actually pay a, a much higher multiple. That was like the multiple went up as the revenue base went up. So it's kind of like we were too small to not be, we, we, were, we were small and we were annoying. Um, and, and, and so they, they were willing to buy us and kind of try and clean us up, but, but they weren't willing to pay a, a premium price. And I said to him, so, okay, I can get one to two on a bottom feeding sale. If I get to five million, I might get you know, three to four times uh, profit. I said, how do you get 10? And he, he said, well, you list. Um, or he said, you find someone that you really annoy. He said, people pay 10 times profit when you threaten them. 
when you threaten Adobe, I'd love to threaten Adobe with our product. And, and, and so, um, I don't know, there's not actually a question in there, but um, in, 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 has that been your experience that people have fundamentally good businesses, but they, that your advice to them would be really, hey, get your revenue up to the next level and then people will start to take you seriously? Look, it happens all the time. I mean, uh, everyone in the room, there's been a lot of um, talk about selling your property rather than buy an agent, doing it yourself. So Purple Bricks yep. is doing a lot of TV advertising. There's a company called Buy My Place, which is listed called BMP. We caught up with them about a year ago before they listed, right? They're up about 50 to 100 percent since IPO, but their business was just terrible, right? They just did not have any, much revenues. Their board was bad. They took a lot off the table. The other thing we didn't like is that the fact that when they're listing and you're giving them 10 million dollars, the founders are already taking six million dollars in their pockets. We don't like that, right? We don't like that. It doesn't show good, you know. You yeah. want you want to have people actually investing in the business. And I'll give you an example. Seafoam, which is CFO, which is a company that we listed which was up $250,000, not only did the managing director make, got a lot of shares, but he bought an extra two hundred fifty dollars or $270,000 on market yesterday. Yep. That is a good, yeah, you know, good signalling effect. We like management having more skin in the game, right? Um, so, yeah, look, I mean, you, sure. you do see a lot of different opportunities, whether it is, um, you know, at, at a low multiple or, or a high multiple. Yes. And you are right. Uh, you're right in the fact that um, if there's someone who's really annoying out there, so whether it is buy my place and you've got, you know. Realestate.com.au, uh, something like that. Et cetera. They'll yep. buy you and they'll pay more, right? They'll buy you and pay more, right? Yeah, yeah. So, sure. Absolutely. Okay.